Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. This is V-Horns by Acoustic Samples, a collection of solo brass instruments consisting of two trumpets, two flugelhorns, and two trombones. It uses a free UVI player, works on Windows and Mac, and all major DAWs, as well as a standalone instrument. The download size is only about 400 to 500 megabytes compressed for the entire library, but the loaded samples only take up about 60 megabytes per instrument. The libraries are separated into three groups, with two versions of each instrument in each library. Trumpet 1 and 2, Flugelhorn 1 and 2, and Trombone 1 and 2. I'm only going to go over the features that were very important to me. First, let's listen to each instrument out of the box, and then I'll go over those features. This is Trumpet 1, which is a brass trumpet. CC1, the mod wheel, controls dynamic. It has a very smooth transition between soft and loud dynamics, which I love. I never like hearing that transition between those different samples. I also like that you get the animation of the valves playing the keys. Of course, this is a B-flat trumpet, so if I'm playing in B-flat, those valves are going to move. I love the transitions between the notes. It sounds very natural. If you play short notes, you get a really accurate staccato. CC11, which is the control pedal, or in this case, my ribbon, controls the vibrato, which is set automatically. So if you play a note, the vibrato will occur automatically and then it will taper off. And then when I press a new note, it's going to happen again. This is really useful because 
when you're playing a passage, you don't want vibrato on your transition notes or your passing tones. This sounds very natural to me, and the first time I heard this, I was so amazed that a sample library could have so much nuance and expression because a lot of sample libraries, they have three or four layers, and you can hear the transition in between those dynamic layers, and it's off-putting. In this case, it's very smooth. And the fact that it only takes up about 61 megabytes is just incredible. So if you have a computer with very little memory, this is not going to be an issue. CC91 controls your reverb. Down at the bottom you have your keyboard. The white keys are going to be your playing range. So here is E2 all the way up to A6. The red keys are your key switches. Now I got this before the manual came out. I don't know where the manual is. I don't know what all of these are. But let's see what they do. So this one's like a really fast mute. And then C sharp, that's going to be a fall, a quick fall. I like the fact that it stops as soon as you let go of the key. So you can have a very quick fall or a very slow fall. Let's see what a D2 does. So this is some type of fall. I'm not sure about the technique since I'm not a trumpet player. So you can use it as a very quick fall or fade out. And then D sharp is a doit. So if you're playing big band, you're going to find this a lot in that. E1 is going to be a note repetition. Instead of me playing the note three times here and getting that tonguing, you're getting a same note legato. F is a half valve downward. The quicker you play it, the shorter that bend is going to be. F sharp is going to go the opposite way. I'm not sure what G does. Uh, I know that it produces a different type of sound, but I don't know what the exact technique is called. I do wish they had the information on here when, when you hover over the key. I wish it would tell you what articulation you're using. Here we have Mix, Virtual Space, and Preferences menu. In the Mix menu, you can change the level of each mic. So mic 1, mic 2, mic 3, and 4. And these are based on distances to the actual instrument. Mic 1 is going to be right in front of it. 2 is going to be overhead. 3 is further away, and then 4 is the furthest away. So let's hear the furthest away so you can hear how it sounds. So this is mic 4. It captures less of the body. Here's mic 2 overhead. So this is away from the bell. It doesn't capture 
the brightness of the instrument and then mic three. So you can mix that as you please. But this also has the virtual space microphones. This recreates the sound of the room and you can edit that here. What type of mic pairing? And it changes the imaging of the sound. You can also change the width. And then you can set the reverb, the mix of the reverb, how much of the mic signals going in, virtual mics, and you can also change the type of room here. So all good stuff. What's most impressive about this is the control you have over very nuanced features of the instrument, like vibrato, your pitch precision, your legato transitions, keyboard sensitivity, and other little effects like noises, tonguing sound, valve noise, pitch, and air. I'm not going to go over every single aspect of this, but I'm going to go over my favorite. So we have max glide. Right now it's set to one semitone, so a half step. So that means it can only glide up to a half step. If you press two notes, one after the other, but kind of connected, you're going to hear that gliding sound. So in order to jump to the note that you want, you have to set the value higher. The furthest it goes is an octave. I don't think that sounds realistic, but then again, I would never slide a trumpet like that full octave. I think leaving it at sem two semitones or one semitone would be enough. Uh, nope precision or no imprecision I should say this is cool because a uh, real player is not always going to land the note the first note or the first part of the note perfectly um, trumpet players or any brass player adjusts very quickly based on how in tune they hear it so the initial note is going to be slightly out of tune but then it's going to get in tune That sounds a little bit out of tune to me. I'm going to take it to 100%. So this is note imprecision. I think that's the entire note. But then you can have attack pitch variation. So that's the adjustment I was talking about. It's out of tune initially, then it gets in tune. And you'll hear this when I set it to its highest value. So you hear that kind of dip or you hear a rise to the note. Of course, that's not realistic. Not every note is going to be scooped up like that. So you can either randomize it or you can set the percentage low and um, play with these values. Next and probably most importantly is the vibrato because the vibrato is going to change depending on the type of music that you play. For example, if you're playing Latin music like salsa, you're not going to have much of a vibrato. So you can edit the vibrato here and completely flatten it or take it out completely on CC11. Or if you're playing jazz, like a 50s style, you might want a fast vibrato and you might want it to, to start right away. So if you draw it in and then you press smooth, it's going to smoothen that vibrato shape that you drew in. You could also set how long that vibrato is going to be before it tapers off. So you have vibrato modulation. So there are different parameters within the vibrato, like volume modulation. You'll get a fluctuation in volume. Then you have pitch modulation, since vibrato oscillates between different pitches. And then vibrato speed. That's like an old jazz style. 
And then you can do a slower vibrato for something like lounge jazz. It's a little too slow. I'm going to lower this. So you can set it just the way you want it. Then you have Growl and Flutter, and these are all MIDI assignable. And that also can be randomized. You can set how much air you can hear. I don't know if you can hear it, but it just sounds like really grainy. And here you can set the natural variation in the pitch. So how much the note moves up or down. That's really cool. Then the valve noise, so that clicky sound. That might be hard to hear over the keyboard sound, but it's there, I promise. And then the tongue, which is going to be that attack sound of each note. You can control the key that the trumpet is in. That way, if you're not really skilled as a keyboardist, but you want to play a song and stick to a certain scale, you can do that. You can transpose it. Set MIDI sensitivity. Then you can set your legato transitions. I haven't messed with this that much, but let's listen to the sounds of the other instruments. So this one has a pretty bright sound. So that's trumpet one. Here's trumpet two. So another tone, another timbre of instrument. And it has a very beautiful sound. But another cool feature is the mute that you can add to this. So here's a drop down menu. And the first one is a Harmon mute. It gives you that nice, bright, tinny sound. Then here's a plunger. And the CC value can be set to anything you want. Right now it's default is CC93. But I'm going to set it to CC20. Since my keyboard has that. This is just really fun to play. Here's a straight mute. Cup. And a bucket. This sounds like it should have a fast vibrato. Has a more classic sound. Vibrato speed. And then let's listen to the other instruments. Flugelhorn is one of my favorite brass instruments because it has a similar range to the trumpet, but it has a very warm, rounder sound.
gorgeous, especially with reverb. Let's listen to that virtual space. Get some room in there. And then in Flugelhorn 2. And then trombone. These instruments have the same high quality. And it's really simple to play because you don't have to have all these key switches to get all those little nuances. I use the word nuance a lot, but it's like it's made for players. But I've programmed this. I've programmed a lot of the notes in the demo that you heard at the beginning. And it was still very easy and very natural sounding, even with MIDI programming. Pitch bends sound very natural. And then here's the silver trombone. I stopped playing when the Saints go marching a long time ago. These are very fun to play. Acoustic Samples did an amazing job on this. To be honest, when they approached me to try out this product, I was like, oh no, sampled horn library. Because... I have a lot of sampled horn libraries, but I don't use a lot of them with the type of music that I like to produce because when there's solo instruments like this, you can hear all the details of the sound and a lot of times they don't sound natural. And if you're wondering, is this better than Session Horns Pro? Yes. As far as the sound quality, the naturalness of it, the playback realism, this is far better so far as it concerns the actual instruments being compared. Um, so trombones, flugelhorns, and trumpets are better than the Session Horns Pro ones. It doesn't have as many automatic articulations as Session Horns, but a lot of those articulations can be automated, and they so honestly sound more natural in this. So I would consider this a must-buy, and especially for the price that they're selling it at right now. It's incredible. Well, there you have it, friends. This is V-Horns by Acoustic Samples. I hope you like this review. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And leave a comment below Tell me what you thought about it. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. And also please consider visiting hi-fi-midi.com for virtual instrument courses. And I'll see you next time.